So I don't know if you've noticed, Alex, but everything I just said, none of it talks about applying to a job. None of it. Because I'm trying to educate people to get away from the traditional way of, of finding a job, which is apply, 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 submit, 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 and doing the same daggum thing over and over again that you just become frustrated with. I feel like if you can sit down and have an hour intentional conversation with one hiring manager in your job search, that is going to benefit you more than applying your resume to 20 openings. Oh, it's 100% true. If you can reach out to a recruiter in an engaging way, that's going to help you stand out above all the other candidates. Of course, you're going to want to make sure that you reach out to the right people. And when you do, you'll want to highlight your skills and what specifically you think the recruiter can help you with. In this video, I'm going to draw on the things I learned from Taylor, as well as my conversations with other new programmers to offer you some specific message templates that I think can help you increase your chance of getting a response from a recruiter on LinkedIn. Hello, my name is Alex and I am the host of the Scrimba podcast. There, I interview experts like Taylor, as well as newly hired junior programmers to give you some ideas about how to navigate your job search. I will jump into the templates in just a bit, but first, it's so important that you know who to reach out to because you could construct the perfect message, but if it lands on the wrong person, that's not going to serve your goal. Let's hear from Taylor how he suggests we find recruiters to reach out to. I think if you're a junior developer, what I would do, or somebody wanting to get into tech or whoever, I would start your job search by going on LinkedIn, searching the word technical and recruiter, right? A little Boolean search, technical and recruiter in the city you're in and see what pops up on LinkedIn. To summarize Taylor here, you want to go to LinkedIn, search technical and recruiter, filter by people, then filter by location. I'll choose London and that gives me plenty of results. You could also consider tweaking your search parameters to look at posts and companies to broaden your view of who is out there and how they can help you. Technical Recruiter is by and large the title you want to look out for, but here on the screen are a few more similar titles for you to look out for as well. At this time, I think it's really important that we distinguish internal recruiters from external recruiters like Taylor. An internal recruiter works at a specific company say Microsoft or Eventbrite, and helps hire at that specific company only. They will sometimes reach out and usually consider cold messages like the one you will learn to send in this video, but you have to understand they have other responsibilities like reviewing technical job applications and supporting candidates through the job process. An external recruiter like Taylor earns a low base salary and is heavily incentivized by commission. They work with several companies or clients at a time and are basically matchmakers trying to match candidates like you with a job that you will love. They have more breadth normally, which means they have a better chance, I think, of helping you find a role. And as I alluded to, because they are incentivized by commission, your interests are quite aligned, which means it could be a great partnership. Knowing this, you might find that your approach looks very different depending on whether you're reaching out to an internal or an external recruiter. In this video, we're going to lean more towards the external recruiter part because to Taylor's great points in the introduction, if you can establish a meaningful connection with an external recruiter, that can have a huge impact on your career. Also, since Taylor is an external recruiter himself, I thought who better to ask what to write in that text box when you're ready to reach out? What do you say to an external recruiter to get their attention? So, so that's very tactical. And this is what I like, right? Is like not many, not many people are talking about the tactical things you should ask or say or, or whatnot. So I'm going to go into my three rules on how to create a good DM, right? So first thing, admiration and flattery. For example, hey, Alex, listen, man, I see what you're doing at Scrimba. You guys, are, you guys are crushing it. Like I've been following you for a bit, right? What does that show Alex? That shows Alex I pay attention. That shows Alex I've been following him. And also, let's, let's be honest, it's going to make Alex feel good. The second thing, yeah, exactly. Pat yourself on the back, Alex. Um, the, 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 the next thing is um, a specific amount of time that you want to talk to that person, right? Don't say five minutes. Don't say five minutes because five minutes means 15. And I ain't got time to talk to Alex for 15 minutes. I do, I do for this. 
but in general, right? Five minutes means 15. So say seven minutes, nine minutes, 11 minutes, three minutes, and then ask the specific question that you want to ask. So Alex, I've been admiring you from afar with Scrimba. Do you have seven minutes to talk about how you build community? Now, I will tell you this. If, if Alex slides into my DM that way, I'm responding back to him. Yes, Alex, I will take three minutes to talk to you. Uh, junior devs, I think what you should do is you, go, you should go around DMing every hiring manager in your town and saying, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Manager, do you have seven minutes? I would love to ask you about what you look for when you're interviewing junior developers. Because guess what? If a hiring manager says yes, get what, guess what you just did? You got yourself an interview. I just want to take a minute to show Taylor some love. If you haven't already, check him out on Twitter and LinkedIn. There are links down below. I want to build on those three points to show you some specific examples. And then stay tuned because I need to explain a little bit about how LinkedIn messaging works because some users will have a padlock next to the message button and there are some limits and things like that you should be aware of. Anyway, let's kick things off by looking at rule number one, admiration and flattery. I personally find that words come easy when they're true. And so if you find that you're forcing yourself to come up with something complimentary, it might be best to stay clear of this. That being said, I can offer some ideas about how to find things that will actually genuinely impress you about the recruiter. Basically, go on their profile and have a look around. What does it say in their bio? What have they written about recently? Go on their company website and read their blog posts. Listen to them on podcasts. You know, for example, say you want to reach out to Taylor. You could write, hey Taylor, I heard you on the Scrimba podcast and your message really resonated with me. Here's another example. Let's say that the recruitment company or the individual has a website and they've written some blog posts to help job seekers. You could write something like, hey Elliot, in preparation for an interview, I stumbled upon your excellent posts on your blog or on the company blog. I think you could improve this by being as specific as possible and saying that, you know, which post you found and how specifically it helped you. This is also a great conversation starter should you manage to jump on a call. Another example, you could maybe say, hey, I read on your website that, you know, your agency hired 40 engineers in one quarter. That That's insane. I've always wanted to work at a high growth startup, for example. Again, if you didn't really want to work at a startup, don't say it. But what we're really trying to get at is that you should draw on the things that genuinely interest you. If you're looking for something a bit more generic, might I suggest you write something like, Hello Mega, I've seen your agency pop up a lot on LinkedIn and I thought it was about time I reached out. In this case, you're not being so direct, you're kind of giving them two plus two instead of four. The idea being if they have been surfacing a lot on LinkedIn, they're probably doing something right in their branding and the content they're creating is gonna make them feel good. The only thing I would caution here is to have something reasonably specific in mind because say you jump on the call and they say, oh, just out of interest, like what, what were you seeing from us on LinkedIn? If you don't really have a convincing answer, that's going to seem quite insincere when actually the real objective here is to make you stand out as someone who's conscious conscientious and polite. Rule number two and rule number three, I think I can bundle together in the sense that they are both about making it as easy as possible for the person on the other end to help you if they can. They want to know specifically what you need so they can give it to you potentially. And they also need to know how to get in touch with you and when. They, they also might benefit to Taylor's point about some reassurance that you're not going to pick their brain endlessly, but rather have a specific time uh, or time limits in place. Actually, I have a few templates to share with you here. I'm gonna start off with a fairly generic one. And I also want to show you a couple which I've purposely written with new developers in mind. So I hope you'll find those useful. But yes, you could build on one of the earlier parts of the message and say, you know, hey Taylor, blah, blah, blah. I'm a front-end developer with two years of experience and I'm currently looking for a new position. I saw you're working with companies I look up to like X and Y, and I wondered if you could assist me in my search. Even if I'm not a suitable candidate for any open roles you have at the moment, I would be immensely grateful for any insights you can share from a recruiter's perspective. Would you be available for a seven minute call to discuss? You can reach me on number. As you probably know, in tech, there is this whole hoo-ha about years of experience. 
And so if you have it, you might as well play to it, in my opinion, and help the recruiter understand immediately what sort of experience level you have so they can more easily cross-reference it with jobs they have. You're also being very clear in this message because you're essentially asking them to match your skills to any openings and then opening a two-way dialogue in the event that they can't help you right now. We've also included Taylor's great advice to be specific about, you know, the time you need and how to reach you. You know, having interviewed many new developers on the podcast and being active in communities, even relating to my own experience, actually, I understand that it's not so easy to send a recruiter a cold message. So I've come up with a sort of gentler template for you to use that really poses your connection request as a question. You know, so building on your admiration and flattery, you could say, Hi, I'm very interested in applying to the junior developer role you shared on LinkedIn, but my CV does not match the requirements exactly. I have one year of experience as a developer rather than the three stipulated in the advert, although I have other relevant skills that might counterbalance this. At a glance, would you still encourage me to apply for the position? I completely understand that you might not want to provide a judgment with only a brief overview of my situation, but I've attached my resume and would also be more than happy to discuss on number. I think with any good advice, you're allowed to apply your best judgment. In this case, I didn't feel the need to say seven or six minutes or something like that, because frankly, it's up to the recruiter in this case, how much time they want to dedicate to learn more about your skills. Again, it's great that you can pose this as a question since it's more gentle. And I think, you know, if you just apply to a job or you just send your resume to somebody, they're going to skim it. But since you're posing a question and, you know, it's just human nature to want to reply if you can and you have the time, I think it's possible the recruiter might see your resume through the lens that you just set, you know, saying that you have some uh, count some skills what will counterbalance the lack of experience. Okay, finally, one more template to try and implement Taylor's advice. This one is the most beginner friendly that, that I'm here to offer. And so you might say something like, hello, Mega, I'm currently learning web development and I'm exploring opportunities to develop my programming skills while simultaneously contributing to a business. Nine months ago, I quit my job to pursue my passion for programming full time and I've since worked with several freelance clients. Now I'm looking for a junior or associate role within a mission-driven company to continue growing my skills while contributing to a production code base. I wondered if you might be able to help me with my search. Are you available for a seven minute call? My number is number, or if you prefer, my email is email. I do think that at the end of the day, companies hire people and pay them a salary to produce a business outcome, right? They want to get a little bit more value than they invest, right? Whether that's revenue or something else. And so there is a temptation, I think, to highlight your skills and ability and your concrete uh, achievements. But also there are opportunities out there for new developers, people, you know, companies who want to hire people new in the industry to train them up and hopefully earn some loyalty from you. And so I think something like this could really work. Because what you're really highlighting is that, you know, coding isn't just a hobby for you. you. You've not just been doing it on the side or only doing it for a few months. You're really proving that you're serious about it. And, and you know, obviously this is a template. You might not have worked with freelance clients, but this is just one example of something you can demonstrate to show that you've been moving closer and closer towards that professional standard. Finally, I do understand that sort of like giving your phone number out is a bit concerning like i don't really like throwing my number out either and if you wish to be more private you could use you know a dual sim or a service like aircall but what i've sort of noticed in the uk and europe at least is that recruiters just like phoning you it makes sense right they might have some downtime between interviews or meetings internally and they can just pick their phone up and give you a bell without the need to schedule anything in this case, I've given you another example, which is to include your email as a sort of escape hatch. They, they might prefer to send you a calendar invite uh, and may also wish to communicate with you asynchronously via email. Again, these are templates, so I wouldn't expect you to really adapt any specific one. They're just here to give you ideas and for you to combine the bits and pieces that really work for your situation. As I alluded to, sometimes there will be a little padlock next to people's names. The long and short of it is that LinkedIn are a business that wants to make money whenever they facilitate a connection between two new people. And so they offer recruiters a program or a plan to pay LinkedIn so that that message button becomes unlocked. So a lot of recruiters you'll find actually won't have the padlock because they pay LinkedIn for a certain membership. 
as a job searcher, you can also subscribe to LinkedIn. It's a little bit less and you get a specific number of messages that you can send. I think you get free LinkedIn in-mail credits with the cheapest plan. But the kicker about that is if you send a message and you don't get a response, you lose the credit. So you're severely limited. Whereas if you receive a response, you're reimbursed for credit. As you can probably imagine, this is all to stop people from spamming and things like that. And on that topic, just very quickly, um, you know, you want to be careful with how you approach people on LinkedIn because there are basically no limits in place but if LinkedIn detect that you are you know spamming if you are sending a lot of requests that are being ignored or rejected or worse reported as spam you know that can severely limit you and to be honest it really wasn't worth it in the first place because by reaching out to more people you feel more productive right but at the end of the day if they're not the right people and you're not positioning in the right way it's just going to hurt you when you can't then send more specific messages later so yes often you can message somebody with the previous template but if the you know padlock is there you don't want to upgrade which is fair enough another sort of trick people often do on LinkedIn is they send a connection request with a note now these notes are limited to 300 characters so you either have one of two options you can either take those templates and condense them really really down you know that can work actually but you could also employ something of a you know want to approach where you connect Honestly, most recruiters are on LinkedIn all day. They don't mind accepting connection requests. They're not worried about it. And then once you've established that connection, uh, you can actually message them without any limitations because LinkedIn are like, oh, you two, you two are connected. Of course, of course you can message. So, so that's that basically. Again, most people are searching for jobs using the paths of least resistance. I'm talking about easy apply and stuff like that. When you reach out in this manner, it's so much better than anything generic because you're being specifically considered right there and then. Also, one last reminder to really think about this, not as, you know, trying to get something or take something from the recruiter, but rather to establish a partnership such that they can earn a commission. And likewise, you know, you want to establish a rapport and a relationship. In my experience talking to new developers on the podcast and things like that, it does generally take people a little bit longer than they were expecting to find a job. So I get this temptation to just go on LinkedIn and hammer it, thinking you'd like to get a response in an interview ASAP. But instead, I would encourage you to think about planting seeds that will blossom later in your journey. Because who knows, in a month, in three months, in, in four or five months, however long it might be, you don't really know where your skills will have taken you. Maybe you pursue new specific hireable interests likewise you don't know what kind of opportunities the recruiter will have so if you just message a recruiter with a very generic templatey you know self-interested message they're probably not going to remember you or, or even give you the time of day but if it, again if you can establish that relationship with someone like taylor or another external recruiter that's just great stuff the last thing is that you never know who will check out your LinkedIn profile. In all likelihood, if you DM someone, they're going to have a look at your profile. So it's really important that you've got all the right things in place there, like a great profile picture, a snappy summary, and so on. I want to show you a couple of resources right here that will help you optimize your LinkedIn profile. So definitely check those out. Also, please remember to subscribe to both the Scrimba YouTube channel as well as the Scrimba podcast. You know, it's just that red button on screen for the YouTube channel but you can find the podcast down below. I've been Alex Booker. Thank you so much for watching. I sincerely hope these templates will help you find success. I think what most job seekers have a problem with is they are not intentional in their job search and they are vague because they're too scared to ask. I will tell you this, the more comfortable you get asking for things, the, the more your career starts to take off. So honestly, to answer your question, I look for those three things. All I do is I just share what I, what I want to see. In my 10 years of recruiting, I don't know if it's because the companies use us as recruiters, so they don't really care about the GitHub because if we're sending them a candidate, they've already been qualified, which is the reason why you use us. But I've never had a hiring manager go, hey, please submit their GitHub. Hey, sis, please submit their portfolio. Never. 10 years. 10 years of recruiting. But I know hiring managers that are my friends who ask for that. So I'm not saying like don't have it ready, but also don't let that hold you back from finding a job immediately.